It's been another big week here at the farm, uh, full of highs and complications, <laughs> I'd say. I wouldn't necessarily say lows, but definitely some, uh, some setbacks. It was good uh, to find a little magpie, that was fun. Little pie was a victim of a, a, a channel bill cuckoo, uh, knocked out of the nest. Her sibling died in the fall, but she survived. And so now I'm raising her by hand and hopefully she'll survive. I mean, she's looking like she's doing all right. Uh, so that's cute, you know, Digger's got a bit of competition in the black and white animal stakes around here. And speaking of new additions to the farm, uh, I've had another couple of thousand additions to the farm. In fact, this is probably the biggest acquisition of livestock that uh, has ever happened to me. But luckily they're very compact. I've never seen a swarm of bees like that before. Oh, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? There was a swarm that happened down at Cabago and Adrian and I captured them just by cutting them off the branch and generally lowering them to, into a box, which was, again, a very surprising thing to do. I mean, I thought we would have had to wear suits and smoke them and do all this kind of stuff, but they're very docile when they're swarming. Now they're settled in, they're in a Kenyan top bar hive, and I've been noticing them everywhere. They're, they're on the clover flowers, they're on the borage flowers, any flowers in the garden now have more bees than I had ever seen here before, and so it's good to have that, that essential part of the ecology here on the farm. But it wasn't all about acquisitions of livestock this week and uh, new things coming on. There was also some animals departing the farm. My seven little boy pigs that I've been raising had come of age, and it was time for them to go off to market. I've never personally taken any animals to the large species abattoir. Uh, my jersey calf went on the back of a truck. It was a bit sad, but you know, it's just the truck drove off. Whereas these pigs, I had to load them up and uh, take them down four hours south to Orbist in Victoria, and then get to this abattoir at two o'clock in the morning, and there was no one there, and there was just a couple of small groups of animals in pens, and you know, kind of looking sad and depressed. I'm like, oh, this isn't great. And, but I ended up getting the pigs off and then leave them in a pen overnight where they've never been before with animals they've never seen before and then to be killed by a stranger. Compared to when Maddie killed the big boy on the farm, that's it's like chalk and cheese really. It was two totally different experiences. After having been there on the day that these animals were born and then also being there on the day that they died, I mean, I want them to be looked after in the best possible way and I kind of feel like now that the best possible way is for them to be killed on the farm but that means that I can't sell the pork. So that's a bit of a conundrum for me at the moment. That's something that I'm working through mentally. I mean, I've got a lot to think about after that last week. It was one of those reality checks that, you know, when you're living on the farm, it's not necessarily all sunshine and birds and bees, you know, there's a, especially if you want to be involved in raising your own meat, that some days are much harder than others.